and welcome back to our Probetus podcast. I'm Savannah, and I have here with me Cassie and Janine from the American Diabetes Association of North Dakota. So this month, we are always featuring our Giving Hearts Day charities. So right now, we have these two here, and they're going to tell us a little bit about the American Diabetes Association of North Dakota. I'll let you two introduce yourself and take it away. Hi, I am Janine Larson, and I'm a board member, a volunteer board member for the American Diabetes Association of North Dakota. My only brother has type 1 diabetes, and I got involved because of that, and because all of the money that we raise helps local kids here in the upper Midwest, in North Dakota, Northwestern Minnesota, and surrounding states get to go to diabetes camp. And so really passionate about raising funds and awareness for this organization to be able to help kids go to camp. Awesome. How'd you get in everything, Cassie? Yeah, so I'm Cassie Edwards. And so I actually got involved um, after working with Janine for many years. My mother and my husband actually have type 1 diabetes. Okay. And so it was just a very great connection for the both of us. And so I've been on the volunteer board for the last four years. Wow. And that's how we get involved and we support... Um, our Camp Maverick through Giving Hearts Day and other events throughout the year. So. And how many years have you been with the association? I have been a volunteer here for 20 years since oh, I fine. moved to this area. I wanted to get involved and found the American Diabetes Association. And we are so thankful for Giving Hearts Day yeah. because we are a 100% volunteer community leadership board okay. made up of board members from Grand Forks all the way to Bismarck here in the Fargo-Moorhead area and we all volunteer and so it's so great to have Giving Hearts Day to be able to help us raise money for camp. If we didn't have Giving Hearts Day, we would be hurting. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of great match donors um, and sponsors as well, so that's one thing we appreciate all of their generosity. Awesome. Well. How many years have you been involved in Giving Hearts Day? Yes, so since 2012, okay. um, we have been a part of Giving Hearts Day, wow. and so we've been raising funds um, for our Camp Maverick um, ever since then. So a little bit um, on Camp Maverick, too. Yeah. So Camp Maverick, uh, formerly Camp Sioux, is our diabetes okay. camp in Park River, North Dakota. Um, so this last year, actually in 2023, we had over 95 campers attend um, camp, and uh, we'll go into a little bit more of what camp is about. Um, but everything that we raise on Giving Hearts Day and throughout the year, I mean, goes towards camp supplies, making sure that um, the medical staff is on um, around location as well. And so that's what keeps our camp going is um, the funds that we raise through Giving Hearts Day. That's so awesome. And so you said there was a transition. So it started as Camp Sioux and is now Camp Maverick? Yes. We did a little name change okay. as the school did a name change. And yeah, we yeah. Did a name change. That's great. And we actually asked campers to come oh. up with the name. Okay. And so a maverick is somebody who is determined and strong willed and a hard worker. And kids who have diabetes are all of those things. I love that. Because if you don't know a ton about diabetes, it is a full time, part time job, is what we like to say. You can't okay. not manage it as yes. a kid. It's always there. You have to measure your levels and your numbers and everything. And so it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And I always think back to I was able to go to camp as a teenager for a week without my parents, with friends, and it was so fun. Yeah. And if you have diabetes, you can't do that. You can't just go to camp without your mom and dad for a week, but you can with Camp Maverick because they get right. to go without their parents for an entire week with other kids ages 8 to 15 who have diabetes and okay. are just like them. That's so awesome. And do you see, or have either of you been to the camp? Have you? I actually have not. Jane yeah. has um, okay. to go attend. I think you were there for a week to go actually participate in some of the activities yeah. um, that they do. And it's really great because we get to see pictures all the time too. Yeah. And year after year, it's these kids make friends for life. Too. Right. I mean, they don't just go to a camp for a couple of weeks and just go home and everything is back to normal. I mean, they communicate with these other friends and other um, coaches that they meet and every you know all of the counselors that they meet. It becomes a 
a, you know, friends and family to them. Um, so that's what we really love to hear too is from the campers. And I love going to camp too. So obviously the parents are very nervous leaving. I would be very nervous. Too, I can only imagine with diabetes at camp. But it's so great when I was there to see when you go and you have food, everybody dishes up and then they get on the announcement and they say, if you have a pancake, it's this many carbs. If you have fruit, it's this many. And just to really help them be able to self-manage. By the end of the week, we have not met a camper who has come back and said, I don't want to go again mm -hmm. because they love it. And they learn so much, which really helps the parents too, because yeah. they have more of that self-management mm -hmm. and insight yeah because i can only imagine as a parent if you had a child with diabetes that just when they're not next to you not knowing all those different things what are they eating what are they drinking where are activity levels how is their blood sugar changing and yes and for kids that age too to be around other kids that are just like them mm -hmm. i think that makes a really big difference too mm -hmm. a lot of kids that we find some of them that have diabetes don't like a lot of other people knowing at that age oh. that they have diabetes because they just want to blend in and be like everyone else yeah and when they go to diabetes camp they are like everyone else right do you see or do you know any stories have kids gone from being campers to counselors we actually oh, yeah. have uh three. tell the whole story camper counselor and then married <laughs> <laughs> so actually not me but a couple okay. of our board members our volunteer board members they're actually from fargo or they live in fargo now um they actually did yes they went to camp became counselors and then after they fell in love and oh yeah, yeah, that gives me goosebumps story. look at that giving hearts day love we yes. love it we love it so actually there's at least three or four board members that um, have been to camp and then were counselors so and one of our board members is a doctor and he was a doctor for many years at camp as well and he helps oh. recruit other doctors so we also have a lot of volunteer time for the doctors and the nurses that are there. Mm -hmm. And so we need that help too, to make sure right. that camp is going, making sure it's 24 hours a day counselors is what we need. Yeah, safe space, got care, whatever you need type of thing. Yeah. What are different activities that they do at camp? They, is there everything? Or? There are all sorts of camp activities. Okay. So everything that you can think of that you would do at a typical camp. So in Park River, North Dakota, it's in the woods. Right. There are hikes. There is rope climbing. There is um, when you go from one tree to the other. Zip oh, line. There, there we go. go. Yeah. Um, Love I've that. I've been there where they do, it's called the Gaga Pit. It's almost like Foursquare, if you grew up with Foursquare. I they, think I know what you're talking about. It's like an octagon, kind yes, of, with the ball. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. they do that. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. They do um, different events, like where they'll put on charades and skits. So every cool. day is a different theme. They do um, campfires and do mm -hmm. healthy s'mores. So like sugar-free chocolate and those sorts of things. Yeah. And so it's just... It's very interesting to see how they're able to adapt, and then that helps those kids be able to go to all of those events with their friends and be able to participate. Just know kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So cool. So we do have Camp Maverick. In addition to that, are there other opportunities for individuals in the community to help support the American Diabetes Association of yes, North Dakota? Yes, we are always looking for volunteer board members. Okay. As we were saying, we're 100% volunteer and we have quite a few in the Fargo-Moorhead area. We're always looking to grow everywhere, yeah. including here too, I would say. Yes, yep. and I think another thing kind of like what I mentioned earlier, I mean, we always are looking for supplies for camp. So oh. I mean, we've had people, you know, give us gift cards um, or, and whatnot, and then we go out and purchase, um, you know, glucose tablets, tablets oh. testers, tester strips, like all of that that can be used at camp. Because yes, there's a lot of fun activities at camp, mm -hmm. but they also get to take a lot of that time to learn how to manage their diabetes. So to actually use those testers properly, to you know, manage their, watch their carbs, watch what they eat. I mean, technology is so huge now. Mm -hmm. um, you can do everything from your phone. So, you know, they're counting their carbs, adding it to their phone, tracking how much insulin they've just taken and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a big learning curve, I think, for a lot of the campers that go through it as well. And I think a big thing with a lot of our um, board members that have been campers and then also counselors, and then they get to teach those young kids 
how they manage it. And so they yeah. really become an inspiration to a lot of these young kids that are just learning how to, to manage their diabetes and kind of learn this diagnosis and kind of wrap their head around a diagnosis that, you know, their life has changed forever. Right, that mentorship mm-hmm. and kind of seeing the future type of thing, knowing even though you might have an element that makes you a little different, yep. you can still do whatever you want to do kind of thing and be who you want to be. And Yes. Do you see a lot of, I know some individuals who have, and I'm going to say these words wrong, but like the, the monitor or like the self yep. kind of. Dis- yep. So a pump. So there is okay. type one where you would have the pump. Okay. And that means that you are insulin dependent. And then type two is managed with medication and exercise and diet. Okay. So when you see people, if they have like a little plastic circular thing on their Mm -hmm. arm or on their leg, that is their, wouldn't that be their monitor? It's yeah. So it's their monitor. So it's like for, there's different brands and whatnot, but Uh the pump too is also where it'll automatically, it's like attached to your body at all times. And so you add insulin to it. And then when it knows You know, it's constantly testing your blood sugar every, you know, two or three to five minutes. Um, And so then it'll tell your body at that time, oh, they need so many units of insulin. It'll automatically self do that for them. Um, My husband and my mom both have um, an actual monitor attached to their arms or to their um, leg or whatnot. And it'll constantly tell them, it'll read every Mm -hmm. five minutes, your level is at 70 or your level is at 300. Yeah. You know, and it'll alert them and tell them that they need to take insulin or they need to eat something or they need to you know, monitor themselves a little bit better. Okay. So, and actually it's really nice because as a spouse, I can watch. <laughs> so I can, I also uh-huh. have an app so I can go in and watch to Access see what that. his daily mm-hmm. routine is and whatnot. So I we've, can track it. We've come a long way, even over I was the past gonna, yeah. 20 years with the pumps and now the apps that hook up to mm-hmm. the pumps and help with coordination. It is so much easier and we're huge advocates for just wanting to to help kids understand how to manage to connect with others that are just Mm -hmm. like them and to really live and thrive with being able to battle a disease successfully as well yeah we find a cure for diabetes we'll keep volunteering so for another 20 years We're signed up. <laughs> <laughs> You're in. Yeah, I had a high school friend who kind of, I got the opportunity to watch the evolution. You know, she didn't have a pump. And then as we got into college is when she got it and stuff. And so are we seeing that being more in younger kids now? Or does it really just depend on the lifestyle and their levels? I think it depends on the lifestyle. I mean, okay. like I kind of, I mean, to you as well, um, when I, I grew up watching my mom have diabetes. So mm-hmm. I grew up watching her test her test herself multiple times a day. Yeah. You know, drawing blood to at least test her glucose level. Um, and you know, now being able to just be self sufficient on a monitor to tell you and then you just know off the top of your head how much insulin you need to take. I mean it's it's amazing. So you got you go through like you said, that evolution of time where you know, where they start from nothing to going and even to help young kids too that to have right. that pump for if you have a child who's three they can't tell you that yeah. they're feeling off or you know that they're low or that they're high mm-hmm. and so i think it's really helping manage that for parents too is there an age where they see it more actively being identified or diagnosed or is it just really kind of depends specific age I just know more and more people across the United States are being diagnosed with diabetes because it can happen at any age I mean Mm -hmm. my mom was 37 when she was diagnosed with diabetes my husband was 22 really you know and then your brother was he was 13 so it's a variation and just your body's it's That's whenever, literally. yes, the, it's the pancreas, which produces insulin, and okay. when it stops working, that's how, how it starts and how it happens, and so gotcha. we're seeing all different ages. Yep. So your brother was 13, your husband was 21, 22, or 22? 22, yeah. um, so how did he feel? We talked about Camp Maverick, and that resource being so huge for these young adults, mm-hmm. kids, 
moving in, you know, transitioning through life, growing up as an adult, did he have any different experiences being, was there, is there any other opportunities for networking for people who become diagnosed? Yeah. So, um, well, to my mom, too, my mom was actually pregnant with me when she, so she ended up getting gestational diabetes. Yes. And so at that point, I mean, she's navigating having a, a newborn, also a, a toddler at that time, and then, you know, having this new diagnosis. And so, um, I mean, you rely on your spouses, so, you know, my mom relied on my dad. Um, but especially when I found, like, when my husband went through, he just kind of went through a weird transition of just not really feeling right. Mm -hmm. um, he was down for school at the time, and so he's actually from Canada. So at one point he went for went home for Christmas break, and he just was not right. So he went into his local, you know, pediatrician, not pediatrician, but his doctor. Mm -hmm. And so it just really kind of started there, and then he kind of relied on his doctor as a resource. Um, so he didn't really have anyone. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he got to a point where it... Um, got really kind of serious for him, and right. now he's just kind of on a regular schedule of seeing his um, endocrinologist every six months um, and whatnot, and so he's kind of relied on them and not really, you know, any other resource. Right. So, well, my mother, of course, he relies on them a lot. <laughs> yeah, now, and yeah. just having that network, I'm guessing, and sounding board can be, mm -hmm. you know, that connection, you y'all are able to help support young yes. adults get and foster throughout their life, whether it be... Yes, we have Facebook groups that people oh, here in nice. the state of North Dakota and Northwestern Minnesota are a part of, and one of our board members worked at one of the local hospitals. They have groups, too, for all ages who have diabetes, and so that's very helpful. Yeah. And then, obviously, we partner with them to learn and to promote camp and just right. to to get that word out there as well. So we definitely want to be advocates for all ages. And for us, we specifically raise money for that Camp Maverick, the diabetes camp for kids ages 8 to 15. So this Giving Hearts Day, do you all have a goal? We do. Number? We do. Our goal is $60,000. Okay, excellent. So I feel like that's a hefty goal for a 100% volunteer board. Mm -hmm. It is. So we are going to be doing a lot of promoting in the next couple of weeks. We love and it. we rely a lot on our past donors, too. I mean, yeah. um, we send out email communications. We call them. Um, we just have, you know, we, again, rely heavily on our past donors to really kind of keep supporting us, which is really fantastic. So. And we're thankful for organizations <laughs> like you. Oh, of oh. course. Yes. We yeah. are allowing us yes. this opportunity because our else we yeah. wouldn't have had this opportunity. So This region how the Dakota Medical Foundation always says that we're one of the most giving regions yes, ever. Yeah. And we truly feel that, that people want to help and lift up do. not just one organization, as many as you can. Yeah, and the opportunity on Giving Hearts Day, 24 hours of giving and matches and all of that is such a catalyst of care and warmth and all good things that happen in our region. Yes, so, so we're just so thankful. So that $60,000 goal, we're excited. To try to get to that yes. yeah. and help kids go to camp. And that's all driven. The goal is to send kids to camp, right? Send kids to camp. How many can that send? Do you all know? Or? That could send, I would say, 75 per week. And that would be, I don't know if that covers it all. I just okay. know that that'll be put a huge dent in a good way. Yes. Okay. Yeah. To because be like you kind of mentioned too, it's not just campers that go. I mean, it's medical staff. There's medical professionals. Yeah, there's a lot of um, as well. So all the supplies, all the food, and everything. Mm -hmm. So this goes towards really bringing down that cost of camp to keep it very manageable. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah, we're excited. That's excellent. Well, if people are looking to help, whether it be monetarily or with their time or other resources that they have, how can they help you? So they can always find us on social, okay. Facebook, Instagram, um, and whatnot. And then, of course, I mean, early giving is open. Um, yes. So you can even yeah. schedule your donation right okay. now to, um, to be given on um, Giving Hearts Day. So it will be matched um, as well. So you just have to type in American Diabetes Association of North Dakota. Okay. And we'll pop up. And then all the money stays local, you mentioned. So yeah. it stays here, helps kids, families in our region, yeah. in your backyard. Could be your next door neighbor, your kid's classmate, all those good things. Um, and then beyond that, Giving Heart State, can you still give on your website? 
If you go yep. to our Facebook group, if you search for us, okay. we have, we're so fortunate, the Dakota Medical Foundation has where you can donate to us anytime throughout anytime. the year. Very nice. And so we're very, very fortunate for that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I'm glad we could get connected and share with everyone the great things y'all are doing over there. And again, 100% voluntary run. So if you have the time and the knowledge, I'm sure they'd gladly take you. Yes. Yes. And if you'd love to know more about camp or just more about how you can help out, you can search for us on social media on Facebook and we'll get in touch with you. Yeah. Give their page a like, a follow, a share, comment <laughs> on posts, do all of that great stuff. It costs nothing and it does leaps and bounds. Yeah. Spreads the word. see kids be happy and like we were saying, come back and say, I want to go again. Yeah. That's what we love. And they advocate for each other too. I think that's the biggest thing. They are family. Yeah. So. Create that network and that bond. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you ladies. Thank you. Yeah.